what's up guys, it's RevJ again. As you know, I've switched to doing most of my recordings on DSLR, uh, specifically a T5i, which I've really loved. Uh, but one of the biggest problems I have is, unlike the GoPros, it's not exactly portable. You can buy the foam soft cases and stuff like that, which are great for the camera body. But when you're doing video, you just have so many attachments. Uh, now, in my case, a couple weeks ago, I posted a video about <clears throat> the new shoulder rig that I picked up. You guys know I have an LED light panel on top, uh, as well as the RAID, Rode, whatever it is, mic. And so all that stuff starts to add up to a larger and larger rig, which I've got some pictures of here. Now carrying this thing around is not simple. Really your only option is to disassemble it and put it in separate cases, or get something like a Pelican case. For those of you that don't know, Pelicans are the, I guess, military grade uh, cases that you see for guns and camera gear and sensitive electronics and stuff like that. They're waterproof, they're uh, vibration proof, impact resistant, all that kind of stuff. They're also very, very, very expensive. Now, most of the larger cases are well over $200, and for the size case I would need to fit most of my camera gear, it would be probably over 400, if not multiple cases. I don't want to spend, you know, two thirds of the purchase price of the camera on a case for it. So, in my nature, I decided to build something DIY. I started by going to a couple of the home stores and Walmart and stuff like that to look at what they have for 16 to 20 gallon tubs. I calculated the rough amount of space I was going to need for the camera rig with some simple measurements and I knew that 16 to 25 gallons would be enough to uh, hold all of my stuff. Most tubs are rated in gallons uh, as a volume measurement. I started looking uh, in the aisle to see what they had. Now they had a couple cheaper ones and a couple nicer footlocker ones and I settled on this one from Sterilite. It's a 16 gallon tote, uh, just kind of dark green, gray, black, I don't even know what color it is, uh, and it's got two lockable latches and a removable lid. Now part of the reason that was important to me was I wanted to be able to slide uh, a padlock or a TSA lock onto it, just if it was in the bed of my truck or I was somewhere public like a car show, not necessarily as a theft prevention, but a theft deterrent, if you will. Plus, it just gives me more security in knowing I can lock it up. Uh, so I went ahead and got that. It was only like nine bucks, so it was a perfect base to start with. It's pretty good, uh, dense plastic. It's not the most heavy duty one on the planet, but for my uses, it seems pretty well built and it's hard to beat for 10 bucks. Uh, another reason this tote was a great choice is if you look at the inner lip, it's got a flat mating seal. Uh, now, some of the cheaper cases don't even have lids that seal well at all. This one at least lays flat. Now, it's not uh, really water resistant or air resistant or anything like that, but because there's a nice surface, we can try to change that a little bit later, and I'll show you guys how I did that. On top of the actual case itself, the next thing we need to tackle is the interior material. Uh, Pelican has something called pick and peel, which is basically that egg crate foam you see uh, with little sections you can rip out. Now in my case, that stuff is expensive. I didn't want to go order sheets of it, so I went to my uh, local upholstery supply place called DLT Fabrics. I think they're online, Dubois Fabrics or something like that, but here in Wisconsin, it's a simple trip down to the uh, south side where they have their retail store. Uh, everybody there is always really nice to me, and they hooked me up with some one-inch, uh, what they call Econo foam. It's regular, medium-density, closed-cell seating foam. This stuff works great because it's soft, it's padded, it's got great sp uh, spring back and resistance, so it's not going to wear in or uh, crumble or fall apart very quickly, and it's fairly cheap. Two sheets of the stuff uh, were less than 20 bucks, and a sheet is about two feet wide by 80 inches long. Now because of the dimensions of this tub, pretty much means you can just cut rectangles out of it and start with a base to fill the tub up, so it was a really, really easy starting point. The actual construction started uh, by me removing the top and flipping it over, taking a few measurements and tracing a pattern onto it to cut out of the foam. I started with three strips to fill uh, the inside of the reinforced area on the lid. This is just so when you close the lid, it's not a raw plastic top. Anything that vibrates around or would come into contact with the lid has a nice press seal to the foam. Now after that initial construction, I was able to move on to the, the meat of the project, which is setting up the foam layering uh, inside the actual tote. Now I started with about three or four base layers. Now this will depend exactly on what tote you're using. In my case I actually built four base layers but found three base layers was the perfect amount of height that I needed. These are simply the foam squares cut to fit the base of the tote. Basically it's just rounding the edges off and trimming them to fit. 
Uh, those three were glued in place using some headliner spray adhesive. Uh, any spray adhesive will work for this project, but the stuff called header bond is actually meant for attaching car headliners into some of the strongest stuff you can get. Again, the guys at the upholstery shop hooked me up with it. It's not cheap. It's probably like 15 bucks a can, but if you only want to do this project once, it's really the only way to go. Once I had those three base layers set up, I was able to move on to the rest of the fill. Now it takes about nine or 10 layers to fill to a reasonable height in the tote. And with that done, I could go ahead and trace the actual outline of my camera rig onto the top layer of foam. Now mine was kind of this H pattern and that clears the microphone, the uh, mat box, the handles on the rig, everything. And it leaves enough space up in the corner so I can build in a compartment and a place to, show, uh, to store the LED light, which I'll show you guys in a minute. With that all done, you can go ahead and do a real quick test fit to make sure your outline and everything is correct. And this is also a good time to go ahead and build the compartment. If you see, I have this uh, whole square in the upper right hand portion here. I took the razor blade and fashioned a small cubby out of the middle uh, five layers and then left the top layer or two solid, uh, which you can kind of pull back to see the compartment. This is gonna be a great place to store all my charging cables, extra batteries, straps, anything like that that you wanna keep with the kit, but not necessarily have out exposed and bouncing around free in the actual tote. Once you know everything's gonna fit properly, it's been trimmed and cleaned up, you can go ahead and uh, go to the main part of gluing. This is gluing in those, uh, in this case, six top layers from layer number four up to layer number 10. These are all cut in the H pattern. I do them one by one, uh, gluing both sides of each piece, letting it set up for about 15 seconds. Once you build up to the layer 10, I put a little weight on the top and simply let it dry. Now the one thing I want to keep in mind is that if you're going to have a removable top for that cubby, you don't want to glue that portion of your top layer or two, otherwise you'll never be able to get the cubby back open. In my case, I ran into this issue, or I almost ran into this issue, so I just used a little uh, masking tape or electrical tape around the cubby area, that way the glue wouldn't be able to set up and stick to each other. You can just go ahead and pull that off when the glue's all dried up, and you'll have a nice reusable uh, compartment. So you've got all your layers built up, the base is glued in place, your top layers are built up and glued in place, your cubby works, really you're 90% of the way there. It's a good time to go ahead and refit all your camera gear to make sure everything does fit. You don't have to make any last minute trims or additions to make sure things didn't move around when you glued them or when they set up. In my case, everything was nice and secure, so I could move on to the last uh, little bit, which is just adding a couple details. Now in my case, I added a little uh, foam chalk kind of at the side to hold the uh, shoulder rig extension piece, something I don't want to have to carry around separate, and it was easy to build a little compartment. In your case, this could be cords, this could be a coil of uh, additional wiring that didn't fit, a strap, uh, more lenses, really anything you want. It's pretty easy to customize these. You don't have to build it the way I did. You'll be surprised how much variation you can build in once you start cutting some foam. You can get these all the way in larger than a 30 gallon size, which would accommodate even the largest full frame camera DSLR rigs and probably some small camera stabilizers. Now the absolute last part is waterproofing the inner seal. As I mentioned in the beginning, there's a nice flat lip that you can use, but it's not watertight. I want to avoid that. Now the answer is something that I've used a couple times before in my automotive projects, which is 3 8 inch seam sealer tape from 3M. This stuff is great to replace fender welting and meet areas where two panels would rub together. But it turns out it's also a great weather stripping uh, for low compression areas on projects like this. Simply take the tape and unroll it to the size you need, making a perimeter around the inside of the lip of the tote. Uh, you can do it on the top or the bottom. I chose to do it on the top so when you open it, the tape isn't on the entry lip uh, to the actual tote. And then simply secure it down. Uh, it'll make a slight compression fit all the way around and make it way more water moisture resistant. Now remember guys, this whole project cost less than 40 bucks and I built it in an afternoon with tools I already had. This is great DIY stuff you can do for any of you DSLR video guys and you can use this for gun cases, uh, electronics, laptops, really anything you want to carry. It's a simple, easy project and I always got more projects coming guys. I got more car stuff, more shoe videos, more DIYs like this if you got them, always more DSLR video stuff. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.
calm state of emergency. New day and I'm still myself. Call it a burglary. Don't go half ass getting your whole ass asshole. Smoking them seeds, chewing and spit them like tobacco. My life ain't complete until you add a rose driveway. Young M Capital 5 8 with my granny nose. Tuck your wife away, just might ride away.